Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2013 outer space drama thriller, Gravity. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to Phil for requesting this review on my Patreon. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you'd like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to either donate to my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the the video description down below and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now Gravity is one of those films that I saw when it came out in the theater in 2013 and it blew me away and it blew my mind and I thought it was an incredible immersive film and it's a film that I've seen numerous times since and unlike other critics, unlike other people who saw it when it came out, and loved it, I still love this film. I think this film is still as good and as unbelievable and as intense and as gripping and as emotionally powerful uh, as it was when I saw it in the theater. Uh, I don't really agree with the criticisms that are kind of punching down at this movie. Because I've seen, I've been seeing that a lot more nowadays, where where you will see people punch down at the film, say it's a gimmick, say it hasn't aged well, say that it's unrealistic, say that it's not really that uh, um, uh, immersive, it's not really that compelling, it's kind of boring, so on and so forth, and I don't get it, I really don't. Uh, I, this is honestly, arguably my favorite film that deals with astronauts or NASA or outer space when it comes to a fictional narrative. I would say a close second, a really close second would be Apollo 13 because I also really like that movie. But this is just uh, such a, a unique and captivating uh, cinematic uh, odyssey and experience that it's just unequaled, if you ask me. Like, I think this film just needs a 4K uh, remaster uh, and a 4K release. And I think some people who weren't necessarily wowed with it after their most recent watch, I, I, I think that they'll... <laughs> I think it'll blow them away again. Uh, because I just watched it upscaled in 4K on my OLED and... It was stunning. Uh, so I can only imagine how much better it would look with an actual remaster. The film is directed by Alfonso Cuaron, who also wrote the film along with Jonas Cuaron. And Gravity is a prime example of a labor of love and a passion project, but not, not necessarily an egocentrical kind of passion project like this is a passion project that is from the perspective of a filmmaker who has his head in the right place he didn't do this for ego he didn't do this as a vanity project he did this film because he genuinely felt that it was a story that needed to be told and he had an idea of how he wanted to tell it in a unique and never-before-seen fashion. And he waited patiently until uh, the visual effects technology had advanced far enough that he could actually uh, uh, make this film work exactly the way that he wanted it to he had the idea for gravity i think he even had like a spec script or something already in in uh print and and ready to go at least three or four years before the film was ultimately released but he just didn't feel like technology had advanced far enough when it comes to visual effects or when it comes to the kind of camera techniques and the camera work 
that he wanted to employ for the film and for the story. So he waited. He waited a while until uh, technology advanced and uh, he was able to do the kinds of shots and he was able to ultimately create uh, this unique one-of-a-kind film. And the patience paid off brilliantly. His direction is mesmerizing. Uh, I honestly think it's his finest work as a director, and he's a really good director. The 12 to 13 minute opening shot, which is shot all in one take, is nothing short of uh, incredible. It's awe inspiring, it's an awesome uh, sequence. And throughout the film, this movie just excels when it comes to its visuals and the direction. How he's able to put yourself in the shoes of the astronauts as the space debris is tearing apart this the space station or their module or the, the, the shuttlecraft and they have to find a way to survive. The whole uh, way that he shoots uh, uh, Sandra Bullock's character, uh, Dr. Ryan Stone, just spiraling and, and just spinning in space. Just how he's able to effectively put the viewer right in the spacesuit is amazing. It's astonishing. It's an astonishing uh, work of filmmaking and how he utilized pretty much 90% green screen for the filming and made it look so realistic is also uh, something that is a genuine standout. And just how he incorporated various different types of uh, camera techniques and movement and just having the camera itself seem like it was floating in space along with the characters. The camera drifts, the camera spins, the camera, it, 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 it's, it acts as if it's a part of the environment. If it's in a weightless uh, environment, the camera is, a, is, is moving around as if it's weightless. There are even first-person POV uh, shots in this film in terms of the camera work. Uh, it's just a spectacular film when it comes to the direction by Alfonso Cuaron. And he also did a really good job working with this cast and really getting the most out of them. And I know that... The cast is fairly limited. It's really uh, Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. You have the majority of the screen time. Uh, and there's a few other people, but really it's those two who are the anchors. And considering the fact that there's a good, good chunk of the film and then overall story that, that, that unfolds throughout uh, uh, the running time that just involves Ryan alone in a cockpit or alone uh, in space to still direct those sequences in a way where they don't come across as flat or uh, lifeless or, or mechanical is definitely quite a feat when it comes to uh, filmmaking. And... As great as the film is when it comes to its visuals and its direction, it's equally as good when it comes to the screenplay by Alfonso Cuaron and Jonas Cuaron. Alfonso mentioned that the main theme of gravity is resilience. And I think that definitely does ring true when it comes to uh, the film. When, when you see the movie, it really is about resilience. It's a, it's a tale of survival. It's a tale of persistence in outer space. 
where Dr. Ryan Stone, a woman who's been through a lot in her life, even before doing all the training and even before being in space and even before going through this harrowing uh, uh, life or death scenario, she lost her daughter when her daughter was only four years old to a tragic fluke accident. And ever since that point in her life, she's been understandably hurt. And it is something that she's still grappling with and she hasn't let go of yet completely. And this has made it so she's not able to fully embrace life and, and move forward. And through what she goes through in this story, she not only gets her feet back on the ground against all kinds of odds, but she regains herself. She gains a new focus in life. She is able to uh, build a newfound reason to live and to survive and to persevere. And it not only makes her stronger, but it also makes her, it makes her more emotionally strong. So it makes her physically strong, but it also makes her emotionally strong. It, 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 it strengthens her her emotions and how she deals with the, with her emotions and, and what's going on in her life as well as her physical body in a lot of ways dr stone throughout the story she goes through different cycles of life and ultimate rebirth there's even shots throughout the film that that really do connect with this theme and and this uh, idea of evolution and rebirth and how it ties together with uh, Dr. Stone and her life experiences there's a reason why you have that shot of her in a fetal position in the suyas and she's floating because it is it's like she's in the womb and then when she leaves the 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 space craft and she goes out on her own again uh she ultimately leaves the the the, the safety and security of that and then when she lands on earth she has to swim to the surface. So she has to resurface. And when she does that, she resurfaces as a new person, as a newborn uh, uh, stone, because now she has this completely new outlook on life because of what she was able to do. And how she passed the test of survival in outer space. And that's not only the only aspects of, of the, the script that you get or the story that you get that are worth mentioning. Like I, I definitely like the little bits of humor that it has mainly when it comes to uh, uh, the character uh, played by um, George Clooney. His character, uh, Matt Kowalski. Um, there are just some fun little lines of dialogue with him. And he's trying to lighten the mood. And I, I think it's it's a good touch. Because I think if it's too serious, then it could get a little dull. But 
he's there to lighten the mood every now and then, at least early on, kind of draw you in. And then it's just this nonstop, uh, harrowing, mostly intense, uh, uh, tale of survival, uh, when it comes to, uh, one woman trying to survive outer space. And I like that there are moments where you see Ryan be very vulnerable. It really makes the, the character resonate more strongly with the audience. The, the sequence when she's essentially giving up, she's turning off the life support, turning off the lights. She's just ready to die. And she's succumbing to all of the emotions and the grief and, and everything that's been building up inside of her ever since her uh, daughter passed away. And she's even like howling with the, with the dog that's on the other end. Cause there's this guy from China who's calling in and he's singing a lullaby to his own kid, which then is also bringing up memories of her child. And so it shows that she's emotionally fragile and human. It shows that she's human. Even the, the stuff early on when she's using too much of her air it shows that she's human. I don't understand the criticisms that people have where they're like, she's not conserving her air supply. Like in the beginning of the movie, she's human. She's frantic. Understandably. So she was floating in space without a tether. Like, I don't know about you. I would be pretty frantic and certain and, and using a lot of air if I was in the same situation. And it shows that while she's a professional, while she was able to go through the rigorous training and, and be a NASA astronaut, she is still human at the end of the day. And she's still got a lot of stuff that she's trying to work through. And when you see and you get to know her backstory and what she's been dealing with, it makes her actions all the more understandable. Not just her panicking early on, but also her being willing to quit, to give up. But what I really liked about that whole sequence is that you have that moment where she has a, a dream or a hallucination, whatever you want to call it, where Matt appears... And he's there and he inspires her and gets her to snap out of it and, and try again and gives her something that she can try to do in order to get to where she needs to get to next in order to get back home. And that was all Clooney. Clooney is the one that came up with that. That actually wasn't Quran. That was Clooney. Quran was kind of struggling with how he was going to work with this and how he was going to get her to be motivated to not take her, take the easy way out, you know, take her own life and instead keep fighting. And Clooney came up with the idea of having Kowalski appear and essentially be an extension of Ryan's mind in its dying throes, not wanting to, to let go, not wanting to, to give up just yet. And it's stuff like that that just really elevates this script, if you ask me. Because if it was just her trying to survive in space 
and there wasn't the elements like this or the stuff with uh, uh, life and rebirth and it was just a simple tale of survival I think it still would work and I think it would still be effective but I don't think it would be as emotionally resonant so I don't have a problem with that entire sequence I think that sequence is one of the main reasons why the film is as great as it ultimately is and there really aren't a lot of moments throughout this story where it slows down that much. It's really that chunk of the film when things are s slowed down and and stuff isn't uh, going completely haywire and you're not biting your nails off when it comes to the amount of tension and suspense that you're seeing on the screen. So I think that was also something that was necessary to just kind of uh, reset things. So then you can just go into pure ins ins insanity, crazy mode when it comes to the last like 20, 30 minutes of, of, of the film. Because the second debris shower sequence, which she's trying, she's hanging on when the debris shower is coming in. I, that is one of the most intense sequences I think I've ever seen in anything. And I do think that the story has a good balance of those moments, as well as a good balance of the emotional, uh, real, raw moments, the human moments. And I love the ending. I love how that's all set up in terms of her landing in the pod, in, in the water, then her taking the suit off and then swimming up to the surface and then touching her feet on the ground, you know, and grabbing the dirt and just standing up to face a new day. I love that there really isn't any like extra added scenes after that. There's no like epilogue or anything. It just ends right there. And I think that's a perfect, place to end it because that's really that's really what it is it's at the end of the day it is about survival it's it's a survival t tale it's a tale as old as time but it's a tale that still to this day if it's done well it still is going to be quite compelling because it's something that we can all relate to in terms of fighting and and doing whatever we possibly can do to survive despite everything that's going against us in a given scenario. And it definitely does help that the script really fleshes out Ryan enough that you get to know her. And as a result, you root for her even harder. And yeah, it sucks that, you know, Matt didn't make it, but you got, an, got, a, you got enough of a gist of when it comes to his character that he... He was a noble guy and he made a noble sacrifice. So it's not like his character was completely unnecessary either. He made a noble sacrifice. He's a big reason why Ryan was even able to survive or, uh, or even able to go as far as she ultimately did, because if he didn't sacrifice himself, then they both would have uh, perished. And, if he really was this self-serving guy who's all about breaking records and being the guy who's had the longest spacewalk and that's all he really cares about, um, he, he wouldn't be so selfless. And I once again have to point out the intensity of this script and this story. It is so intense when it comes to these sequences involving... Uh, Ryan just surviving in the reaches of space and even when it comes to the other uh, crew members and just showing the very real aftermath of a shower of, of debris and what a dead what dead bodies look like in space all frozen and lifeless which you know they're dead 
but you know, just completely frozen and it's just eerie in a way that it is you just can't you can't really see in any other capacity unless you find somebody frozen in a freezer. And there's something about not seeing like up close and, and personal when it comes to how some of these crew members died that just makes it all the more impactful. Like the guy who has the, the hole in his face. And I thought that was a good touch when it comes to the story as well. I like didn't show it happen. If it, if you did see anything, it was like way in the back. So then when you do see the, see, uh, uh, that hole in his face, it's like you're reacting along with, uh, uh, um, Ryan when she's seeing that uh for the first time which makes the the story even more immersive and that's definitely a huge selling point when it comes to the film and the story is just how immersive it is as a whole and I genuinely do feel it has a really good cast I know there were multiple different people that were considered to play different the two main roles in the film. Robert Downey Jr. was initially cast to play Kowalski, but eventually he left the project, and that led to a bunch of other actors who were considered like Daniel Craig, Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Harrison Ford, John Travolta, Bruce Willis, Russell Crowe, Kevin Costner, Denzel Washington, and then ultimately George Clooney. And some of those actors, I think, would have been interesting. I think they might have done a really good job, like Harrison Ford or um, Tom Cruise. Bruce Willis might have been interesting. But I'm really glad that George Clooney got the role because without him, we don't have the the dream sequence because that was all Clooney's idea so without Clooney's involvement you don't have that because it would just be a different film and I just think Clooney was just fated it was just fate that he would be the guy to play Kowalski because he would ultimately contribute to the film in, in such a massive way and when it comes to Ryan, Angelina Jolie was originally cast, but then she dropped out. Then Natalie Portman uh, turned down the role because she was pregnant. So then that led to other actresses being courted like Rachel Wise, Naomi Watts, Marion Cotillard, Abby Cornish, Carrie Mulligan, Sienna Miller, Scarlett Johansson, Blake Lively, Rebecca Hall, and Olivia Wilde. Uh, but ultimately they went with Sandra Bullock. I think because her screen test was just so spectacular. And when you see her in the film, you can't think of anyone else possibly playing this role. It is honestly one of her best performances. And it's honestly a shame she didn't win an award for this, like a major award for her performance in this, because I think some people don't really understand or realize how difficult this performance ultimately was. This wasn't just acting in front of a green screen, which has its own difficulties. This was an extensive and a demanding production that needed a professional, somebody who was at the top of their craft because it, it really entailed so much. And what do I mean by that? She had to memorize all different kinds of movements when it comes to what Ryan was doing in a particular shuttle or what she, what movements she was making in terms of what direction she was going or what buttons she was pressing. This is all stuff that is not necessarily that easy to do as an actor. Because she had to work with Karan and his ambitious filmmaking and his uh, his concepts and his ideas that he had in his head, which were, for the time, out there, but now are kind of the norm. 
when it comes to the POV shots and the traveling shots and the, what he does with the camera and everything and following the, the actor around in a more immersive fashion, that's something that wasn't necessarily as common. So what he was doing was not the norm. And so he had to have an actress who could really flow with him. And I, and I definitely do feel that Sandra was just perfect for that. She was also in phenomenal shape. Apparently there were a lot of preparation exercises and things that they were doing for the film where Cron would do these breathing exercises along with Sandra Bullock, where they would be doing some training underwater to, to, to simulate, you know, the, the space or the intensity of, of certain uh, scenarios in the story. And he couldn't keep up with Sandra because she was just that locked in and she was just so physically uh, in a superior shape. And um, that just is a testament to how serious she took her role in this. She wasn't messing around. And that just added to the authenticity of the performance and just made it all the more genuine. And it made the film because without that central performance, if you don't buy it, if you don't buy into what she's going through, to what she's experiencing, to, to the emotions that she's feeling, the film is going to fall flat. It's going to, it's, it's, it would just get sucked into a black hole of, of banality because it just w wouldn't be anything other than just, Nice looking eye candy because there's no emotional crux or connection with it. And Sandra provided that. And I mean, she had to be isolated when it comes to filming for up to like 10 hours in a, in a, in a, in just a tin can essentially. And the only way she was communicating with people was communicating with people from the outside with with her uh, a headset like this is the kind of stuff that could really break a less accomplished a less talented actor so yeah sandra was spectacular and i legitimately cannot think of anyone else that could have played this role of dr ryan stone as well as, as Sandra did, or even half as good, especially not out of that list of actresses. You also have Ed Harris, who's like the voice of Mission Control, who was also in Apollo 13. Um, and you have some other people like Padalech Sarmo, who's the voice of Sharif, and Basher Savage, who's the voice of a captain of the ISS. But really, it's Sandra Bullock and George Clooney who are the central uh, main cast members. And when it comes to the scenes with those two, like they were really good together and they've always been good together. They've had great chemistry going back to other projects that they did prior to gravity. And the film also features some gorgeous cinematography by Emmanuel Lube Lubeski, even though a large chunk of it is just done with a computer. It still has a really great look to it. Uh, it doesn't look that fake. Uh, the editing by Alfonso Cuaron and Mark Sanger is amazing. It is a, an, an unbelievable accomplishment because so much of this film is so reliant upon really top-notch, really solid editing in terms of keeping you immersed in a given scene or a given moment and just showcasing the 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 size and the scope of the film. And with a lesser editor, like it really could hurt the movie because it would just break the illusion. And I really like the score by Steven Price. I think it's really underrated. I think it's uh, got some really good beats to it. Some really great compositions that really add even more emotional reson resonance to the movie. Uh, and just really makes some sequences all the more uh, intense and all the more uh, uh, powerful. And 
I have to give massive props to Framestore, the visual effects company, uh, and the people who worked at Framestore who worked on this film for quite a long time. Because for 2013, what they did in terms of CGI and green screen was unheard of. To this day, it still, for the most part, really holds up, especially when it comes to the the sequences taking place in outer space, the various different uh, sequences with the space debris tearing things up. Um, there are a few shots where you can kind of tell like some of the CGI fire, for instance, but it's something that I can deal with because it's all a part of Karan's plan for the film's visuals. Like in order for him to do some of this camera work, it had to be CGI. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to to really do it effectively uh, or not the way that he wanted to. So it still all ties together in the end, even though there might be some moments where, yeah, if you judge it compared to CGI from today, it, it can it can be a little bit dated. But it's not to the point where it just completely takes you out of the movie. It's still an incredible feat of uh, filmmaking and visual effects. It really is. Uh, considering that there are so many shots in this that don't even look like they're CGI at all. They look like it, it's practical, but it's CGI. And I also want to give credit to the runtime. It's only 91 minutes, and that's with the end credits. You take out the end credits, it's only an hour and 20-something minutes. It's rare that you get a film like this with a filmmaker like this, with this kind of cast and this kind of budget behind it. And it's only an hour and 20 something minutes. I think if this film was any longer, it would have gotten a little bit boring. It would have suffered when it comes to pacing, but because it's a shorter film, it doesn't suffer from any of those issues whatsoever. It's a, a really tightly packed, tense, dramatic thriller with some absolutely unbelievable sequences and visual effects. And it's anchored by two performances uh, that are really great uh, in particular, Sandra Bullock, who is just absolutely spectacular as uh, the the main lead, Dr. Ryan Stone. And yeah, I, I love this film. I, I think this movie is a prime example of how you can make a compelling and genuinely memorable film with just a simple, straightforward plot about survival about one person trying to survive the elements and in this case outer space but anyway thanks for watching my review of gravity and as always i'll see you later see ya